Hello, welcome back to From Soft Serve. Today, I want to show playing Bloodborne at 1440p resolution, which, of course, is something we've been able to do in the emulator for a little while, um, but we had to make a concession uh, in order to do that. Uh, and there was an issue that we've had recently, and, well, I guess actually for quite a while, where the files that are controlling how the game looks. They're called G params, uh, or dr essentially draw params, and they control how the game looks and uses ambient occlusion and depth of field and color grading, and basically the whole visual makeup of the game is controlled by these files. Um, so let's try running it at 1440p. I'll show you what happens, and then I'll show you how I fixed it. Kind of a band-aid fix. It's not like long-term, but anyway, so... Uh, let's go into our Bloodborne folder here, where we have the executable, which is called eboot.bin. Uh, let's rename the original one. Keep that. And you'll notice I have a 720p one, I have a 1440p, a <laughs> 1440p 60. Now we can do most of the patching, or all the patching, in the emulator itself. But here I was actually using a program by Illusion, the fantastic modder who took Lance McDonald's patch and then put it on uh, PS5, a bunch of other patches and resolution patches, all kinds of cool things. Anyway, um, so let's use the 1440p one. Uh, there we go, so that's good. Uh, let's go into our draw param folder and I'm just gonna delete everything. <laughs> Uh, which might sound crazy, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Also, don't worry about these folders. That's not a that's not a big thing. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, yeah. Let's grab that. Uh, yeah. What the hell? That's fine. Let's grab all of those. This is going to be a little convoluted. So stick with me. It's. It's going to seem a little convoluted. Don't worry about that file transfer. It's, it's fine. Okay. So we got that. Put those. I put the original ones back. That's what I was doing there. So these are the unmodified gparam, drawparam files for Bloodborne. For the different... Because they have them for different areas. There's a scene one. There's a map one. It's the whole thing. I'll get into that later. Um, and then let's launch the emulator. Shadps4.exe. Uh, let's go to cheats and patches. So I need to actually update this file. I couldn't get it to work, but I'll have to go back into Discord where I could basically do all the resolution patching here. Because you'll notice there's a 720p one. I just didn't seem to get it to work where there was like the 1440p patch. So anyway, I just patched my, my executable. Uh, I promise, stick with me. This will somewhat makes sense. <laughs> so uh, I'm still disabling chromatic aberration, motion blur, and skipping the intro. Uh, so we're doing that, but we are importantly running it at 1440p. So we're going to double click, see what happens, try to get in the game. Ooh, actually I turned on my controller a little bit late here. Oh, still worked. Okay. Let's see if we get in game. That's always a fun thing, is it's like, okay, I'm recording on OBS, I'm asking my processor to do a lot of things, and it's not gonna go well. Hey, there we go, okay. So actually, that is working as I thought it would. So here's what we were getting when we were trying to run it at 1440p with using the draw params, the default ones. You get this gray screen, and you're like, well, that sucks, and we noticed that that happens, uh, that happens when you try to run it at 720p or 1440p or 4K or 800p, basically any resolution that was not the default, which was technically 1080p, but the game would like run it at 900p on PS4. Anyway, um, yeah, we were like, what the hell? So here's what we did originally uh, when the game had a black screen, even at the standard resolution. Uh, and this is how I looked into fixing it. So basically, what we did... Uh, let me make sure. Do I still have all those? Okay, cool. Um, so basically, here's what we did to fix this. 
uh, originally with the emulator. It's very funny. Uh, we literally were just like, yeah, what if we just deleted uh, everything except for two files? What if we just deleted everything but the default dot G param and the default underscore draw param? What if we just deleted everything and then tried it again? And the mad lads, this is a crazy idea. I thought the game would just crash, but somehow without Bloodborne works is if it doesn't find the file at once for the map that it's loading, it will just go, oh, well, let's use the default one that's just sitting here. I find that a little curious. I didn't think that, that would happen. So anyway, we get rid of all the draw params except for the default template one. That's what that one is. It's a template one. Uh, and all the other ones are customized and color graded and, you know, how where are the lights coming from? Like, literally, I'll show you those files. It controls literally everything. Uh, so let's try it again. Now that we've gotten rid of the draw params, and it's only using the default. Aha. Uh -huh. So now we're in the game, and this is how it looks at 1440p, which is very cool. Uh, but what you'll notice is the visuals look not like they should. Uh, like the sky, uh, there's no... You know, none of the actual, like, distant objects are faded correctly. You'll notice the distant terrain here is just completely standing out. And because essentially it's using the template. There's no custom map uh, related draw stuff. So uh, let's quit out again and I'll show you how I fixed it uh, so we can actually get the benefit of the actual custom draw stuff. So uh, here's what I did. And the core thing is that we know that the default one works, right? That was my, the thing in my head. So I know the default gparam is working. Um, so let's open that because I will show you uh, what's inside of it. Uh, so let's witchy B and D open that bad boy. Aha, there you go. Okay, so basically it spits out an XML file. And yes, judge me for using WordPad or whatever. I don't use whatever text plus plus or whatever the fuck the other ones are. So basically, in the default gparam, this is what a gparam looks like. Um, Dark Souls 2 uses a very similar one called filters, filter params. Um, but that's essentially what the gparams became. And then they use this gparam system for Dark Souls 3, for Sekiro, for Elden Ring, for Armored Core. This is just how they do it. Um, and it's different than how they did it for Dark Souls 1 and Demon's Souls. They moved over to this new system. So anyway, you'll see that they directional lights, uh, specular color, like this thing. It basically is telling the game how to render everything. It handles the fog, light scattering. Uh, the actual environment map, so the baked light map, color scale, filter, depth clip, like it literally uh, is everything. And they even have separate uh, little uh, modules here for uh, the screen space ambient occlusion. Uh, and then you go into your Yebis system, which has lens distortion, depth texture, motion blur. Uh, and then you can actually dial that in, use in enable anti-aliasing, light shaft, chromatic, literally this file controls so much shadow param of course is the big one uh which i thought was really cool this is something i'm going to look at later where shadow map resolution it's actually really easy to change ds3 doesn't let you really change this uh from the g params i've looked at but it just has a three so i need to look at we don't really have shadow casting working anyway uh, but you can even change how the, what color the dynamic shadows are um and then blur count, blur radius, all kinds of cool stuff. So basically this one, this default gparam, I knew it worked. That's the, that's the key thing. I knew this worked. Um, so by process of elimination, I was like, got it. Let me, let's find the gparam for the area that I'm in currently in central Yarnum. Uh, so let's load up my Bloodborne project and uh, we load up central Yarnum, which you'll notice is 2401. And it takes a little while to load. Okay, all right. Huh, I'll say the texturing 
texturing didn't quite work as well this time, but whatever, it's fine. Um, so here's where our character is standing. That's also uh, Cleric Beast, uh, homie. Also, I noticed this. There's a guy with a cannon up here. It's a dummy object, so it's it's not actually supposed to be like a guy with a cannon. But I always thought that was an interesting choice by them because I think it. I don't know. I don't 100%. I I understand more how these work in DS1, but Bloodborne. Yeah, I don't know why there's a guy with a cannon up there. Realistically, um, sometimes they'll do that to control drawing of other things because that doesn't actually show up in game. It's a dummy object or dummy enemy. Um, so here we are, uh, and you'll notice it's 2401 for Central Yarnum. And this is kind of where it shows you down here. The G param config is by default. They they tend to use like zero for most things, but not not always. There actually are like uh, on this carriage. You'll see it uses the G param 40. So there's a different file for how certain things are supposed to look uh, at a distance and whatnot. And so yeah, you'll see like this distant one uses light set 202, and then the sky uses fog param 100. So there, there's a whole bunch of uh, different ones that they use. So I knew it was 2401 uh, for what I was trying to fix initially. And so basically you go into the draw parent folder and let's, yo oh yeah, because I deleted everything. Aha, always have a backup, ladies and gentlemen, always have a backup. Um, and so basically I was like, yeah, let's copy these back in uh, because we're going to want those back. Yes. Okay. Sort by name. Uh, and so basically I was like, okay, so 20, you know, cause they're all listed by their, their map name. So if you're still sticking with me, <laughs> I appreciate you. I know this is convoluted. Um, and so we have 2401000. And so at first you'll notice there's, there's actually G param B and D and then G param. So I found out the hard way. I was trying to edit this file, uh, which if we open this one, see if we get that to open, there we go. So now you'll get a very similar looking file uh, to the default gparam over here. Uh, so yeah, basically we have the default here and then we have the one for central Yarnum that I'm standing in. Uh, and you'll notice it just has all the custom values that FromSoft made for basically everything of how central Yarnum should look. And uh, I went through and I found, I basically, here's what I was looking for. I knew this file on the left, the game would work and you could, you could see stuff and it wasn't a gray screen. And here something was causing that gray screen. So what I was looking for is not so much like anything that had like a certain value, like a float value or whatever, because I knew that wouldn't cause... I mean, I didn't know, but I, I assume that would not cause just a blank, like, gray screen, right? Because uh, you'll notice when I loaded in, you could tell it was rendering things. Because I had the reshade ambient occlusion shader turned on, so you could actually see the game uh, rendering. There was just that gray thing in front of it. And it only happened at other resolutions other than 1080p. So something with the resolution scaling was goofing something, uh, or something in the G-Parent was causing issues. So, I basically went through line by line <laughs> and I looked for things that were being enabled or disabled like for instance you'll see false or true and I was like okay so enable local light and so I basically just kept scrolling until I found something I thought uh, would work I just kept turning things off and on and skipping a lot of it I tried yeah like lens distortion which I was already disabling uh, the chromatic aberration and whatnot, but I figured I'd try it. So zero and one, the enable style stuff uh, is what I was really looking at because that should be the thing that fixes it. And so then I kept trying and trying and I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Uh, and none of these were working. And so basically, uh, oh, actually here's a funny thing. So this is the one I found that fixes it. Thank you for sticking with me. I don't even know how long this video is at the moment, but I promise it's worth it. Uh, so it's called Yebis Color Grading Enable. Now, the funny thing is you'll notice that this is actually up here already. There's Yebis dash enable space color grading. Well, the funny thing is that one doesn't do anything. 
Turning that off doesn't do anything. But if you find this one, which is actually down here <laughs> in another group, this one fixes it. So we're in 2401. But actually, here's the even funnier thing. Uh, it turned out I was in the wrong file. I don't know why this, how this works in Bloodborne, but basically this gparam, uh, applying those changes didn't do anything. You actually have to modify the one in the .gparam bnd, not the .gparam .dcx. Why? Don't know. Don't know. Just genuinely don't know. And so what that does is it actually creates a separate folder um, here. And let me actually delete that real quick. Let's delete that. Just so we get a fresh one. Let's get a nice fresh one and be really cool. So 2401. Uh, so as you can tell, I, probably, I was losing my mind because of going through these files and just kind of goofing around. Uh, and so let's refresh. If anyone makes it to the end of this video, they get like a fucking medal. This is crazy. Uh, M2401. So here's what we were stuck with. When you open this, and then you, you witchy BND this, and now you get an XML file. And it's, as far as I can tell, it's the same as that other file, but it's the one that actually makes the changes. Or, I don't know. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't know. Uh, also, you'll notice it says Dark Souls 3 up here, but that's because they essentially are very similar gparam setup, or maybe identical. Uh, so, now we go look for that line again, and we turn it to a zero, and we save it. Um, and then I found out that the you don't need to edit this other one. Uh, that one just references this first one a lot. Uh, and so you don't actually need to do that. So basically, once you're done editing it, we've saved it. Now we're going to kick it back into this gparam file up here. And then we go back here and we witchy bnd that and chuck that file back down here, uh, which should be 2401. Yeah. 2401, that's the gparam one. And then we have the 2401. Oh, let me refresh. My god. Uh, so this is the life of the Souls modder. This is what you do. Yes, here you go. Here's our new one we popped in there for 2401, which is Central Yarnum. And now, uh, now that we've edited that, if I've done what I think I did the other time, if I followed my own steps correctly in my head, and as you can tell, it's very comp it's just convoluted as hell. Then this should work. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> or maybe I just fucked it up. We'll see. I, th I think I did it. I think I got it. I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did it. I think I got it. Oh, baby! Look at that! We got it. We're in the game. We're using the actual draw param. Uh, now, it is disabling the color grading, so it's not going to look as exactly like Central Yarnum, but um, you'll notice things do blend in uh, a lot better, and it basically just looks a lot more like it should, uh, and it's not as harsh. And yeah, so it's a better balance of, of things, and you can play the game closer to how it should be. Uh, now this does happen. I think this happens even when we don't fix that because I just disabled the color grading. Um, oh, oh, it crashed. Well, that, you know, that's bound to happen. I was gonna talk about a texture upscale, but I guess I'll save that for, no well, I was gonna save it for another video anyway. Um, at the end there, we were looking at a, a, a texture I upscaled from 1K to 2K. Fun stuff. Um, yeah, so that's how I fixed it. Uh, and I put it up on... Uh, let's go to Nexus Mods real quick. Uh, okay. Nexus Mods. I'm always afraid when I type in on the search bar, I'm like, is there going to be a really weird search that pops <laughs> up? <laughs> like a porn search or something? I'm like, ah, damn it. Um, let's see. My Mods... 
so I had had like three different Bloodborne mods. I had the FPS boost, then I had the reshade one, and then I had like a little material mod that I haven't made a video about, but I will. And I decided to just chuck them into one mod called Bloodborne Visual Tweaks. And it has three separate mods in it. It has the FPS boost, Bloodborne reshaded, material fix. Actually, no, it has four mods now. So the, the fix that I was talking about in today's video of what fixed it, I put that up on the mod. It's called Gray Screen Fix uh, when using high resolution. Technically, it's also when using 720p. And you want to use the actual default draw params and not just chuck the whole folder out. Um, and yeah, so you copy that into your draw param folder and uh, bingo bongo, uh, it looks good. It looks better. Like it's disabling the color grading-ish. I have to do like a side-by-side -side of like 1080p with the color grading. Anyway, um, let's see if we can load in the game again. Let's just see if we can load in the game for funsies. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I guess what we should do. Hold on. Let's load it. Let's do this correctly. Let's do this correctly. Um, so let's once again delete everything. <laughs> uh, except for that. We don't do that. Let's delete everything. And then go to backups. And uh copy all this so that way we can load in the game at 1080p to see the color grading that's the thing I'm, I'm gonna be a good content creator and actually do it instead of just saying i'm gonna do it and i don't do i don't do it does anyone else suffer from that i get lazy at the end and i go eh, whatever okay so we have the default we have our standard ones put back in there we now need to go back to our uh executable and basically, let's rename that what it was for 1440p, and I believe this is the standard one. Uh, so, could I call it dot .og? Um, dot something? Don't know what that one is. No one knows. Uh, eboot.bin. Okay, cool. So now we should have the default one. I put the regular draw params back. Now we're at 1080p, 30fps. Let's launch it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, I had the emulator open twice. Don't judge me, okay? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's make sure that the patches we have applied to it are still the disable motion blur. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I needed to save that. Okay, so let's see how the color grading, how different it looks. Because maybe I was gaslighting myself, and that thing actually doesn't do anything. And it looks totally fine. Well, we're about to find out. Let's see if it loads. You never know. You never know with the, the emulation right now. Sometimes it just won't load. Sometimes it bombs out immediately. Um, I don't know. Well, I, I think it looks slightly different. Let me know, chat. Let me know. So this is with the actual color grading at 1080p. I'd say this is about the same. Yeah, okay. Well, whatever, that one to a zero fixes it. So, huh. Or at least it looks the same as how the emulator is running it currently. Yeah, I will say the the stagecoach here is standing out a bit. And if you remember from Smithbox when we were had our file up, our mod up, this was set to a completely different G param than 